Welcome to your very first lesson officially of sixth grade math. Um, so today we're going to start off chapter one with our chapter opener. And uh, they call this a fair game review, which means these are skills you should already know how to do. They should not be new to you. But if at any point you realize, oh my goodness, I haven't done this before. Um, maybe you were absent that day um, back in fifth grade. It's important for you to realize that today so that you can get extra help and put in a little bit of overtime outside of class. So the skills that we're going to be working on today are listed here. These are our learning targets. I can and still should be able to define and identify prime and composite numbers, add and subtract mixed numbers when they have a common or like denominator, and I should be able to simplify fractions. So these are skills that are expected um, of you to have learned before sixth grade math. But just in case you have forgotten some of these, we're going to spend today freshening these skills up. Just a reminder that these skills, um, our learning targets, can always be found on your chapter overview. And this is glued into your notebook. So the first thing that we're going to review, and if you need to take notes and jot these things down, it might be helpful for you. Um, what are factors? So factors are really, it's just a multiplication word. Uh, when you take two numbers and you multiply those values together, the numbers that you've multiplied are factors. So if we look at a multiplication chart, the factors would be the values on the outside and their product or the answer that you get when you do multiply those factors together would be in the inside space here. So we see that this number 20 could be have the factors five times four, but the number 20 is not just found in that column. It is also found over here in the four times five column and over here in the two times 10 column and over here in the 10 times 2 column. And if our ones row were long enough and kept going, we know that eventually we would find a 1 times 20. So factors, remember, are these values on the outside. We multiply to get the values on the inside. These are called the products. So when we're talking about factors, we're thinking about what numbers do we multiply together to get some kind of larger value. So the factors of 12 would be 1 and 12, because 1 times 12 is 12. We could reverse it and also do 12 times 1, but the numbers 1 and 12 don't change. The other like fact family that um, gives us a product of 12 would be the factors 2 and 6. A 6 and a 2 get multiplied together to give you the value of 12, and then a 3 and a 4 are the other factors that could give us a product value of 12. So you can list all the possible ways of creating the number 12 when we multiply two numbers together. This is where prime and composite numbers come in. So a prime number only has two factors. So if we were going to list them out, we're only going to put two numbers down on our paper. We're going to put the number 1 because 1 times anything is the number and then the number itself. So anytime you multiply just one and the number that you want to get, and that's all the possible options there are, we call that a prime number. The number two would only have the factors of one and two because one times two or two times one, that's the only way of getting the value of two when multiplying. The number three, you can only multiply a 1 and a 3 together to get the answer of 3. Notice that it's not what can I divide. It's all about multiplication when factors are involved. Prime number would also be 5 because 1 times 5 is the only way of creating the value 5. 7 is also a prime number. 1 times 7 is the only way of getting a 7. I can't do anything else like a 2 times 3. I'm never going to get a 7 any other way. Notice that we skip the odd number 9 because 9 can be created by doing a 1 times 9, but it can also be created by um, multiplying a 3 by a 3. So since 9 has other factor options or fact families involved in it, it's not prime. 
And if it's not prime, it's usually composite. So composite just means it's composed or created by many. So 11 is also a prime on here. If you notice, most prime numbers are odd and odd numbers are just odd. There is an exception to the rule and it would be the number zero because zero can never be multiplied by one. You'll never get any value if you multiply it by zero because you're talking like zero groups of 100 is just still nothing. And then the number one, because one is itself, it's not prime or composite, it's just neither. If a number's not prime and it's not a zero or a one, it's gotta be composite. So any value that's listed multiple times on a multiplication chart, it's gotta be a composite number. So the number 70, it's an even number, which means two times something is gonna give us 70. We also see it in the 10 times seven column and all of those other options is what's going to make this number 70 be a composite value. So we've got the reminder of what's a prime and what's a composite. These are examples, which means this is something that I'm gonna work out for you. And if you have questions, this is the perfect time to ask them. So the first example is trying to figure out the number 26. Is that a prime number or is that a composite number? So I really have to think about what values can I multiply together to get the number 26? Is it just one and the number itself? Or are there other options? And as soon as there starts to be other options, I can stop listing factors because I know it's not prime, it's gotta be composite. So on this one example here, because the factors of 26 include one times 26, but also a two times 13, because it's even, it's got a fact family involving value two, I know that this has more than two factors. And since it's more than two factors, this one has to be a composite number. My other example is trying to figure out whether 37 is prime or composite. So I just have to look at the factors. How do I build two numbers together when multiplied to get the value of 37? And if you look at the multiplication chart, you really don't see a 37 anywhere on there. 37 is one of those special values that it's only a one times a 37. That's the only way of multiplying uh, two factors together to create the value of 37 when you're done. And since there's no other fact families that can be multiplied together, this one has to be a prime number. After I go through some examples, if you have questions, this is the perfect opportunity to ask. Otherwise, following a um, example walkthrough from me, then it becomes your turn. And so your turn is to go through each of these values listed here and decide if it is prime or is it composite. And just a reminder about what's the difference between prime and composite, those are here as well. If you're working from home, you're gonna pause this video while you work out uh, whether each of these is prime or composite. And if you're working in the classroom, we're going to pause this video and go through each of these together to determine whether it's prime or composite. So pause the video. Now that we've had a chance to practice identifying whether it's prime or composite, if you're working from home on this, the answer key is listed here. You can pause the video while you check your work. If you were, we were working in class together, you can kind of do a quick self check. As we went through each one, how did you do? Were you good with identifying prime or composite? Were there a couple that maybe you struggled with? Or were you just guessing, I'm gonna pick prime, I'm gonna pick composite, because maybe the kid next to me said the same thing. So if you're not doing okay with the skill of prime and composite, there is going to be um, application of this skill in this chapter. And so we'll wanna get you a little bit closer to being here 
or even better, thumbs up on that. Our next skill for this uh, chapter review or chapter opener is involving mixed numbers. So let's just first talk about what is a mixed number. So mixed numbers have to do with the fraction idea. Mixed numbers have holes, but they also have a fractional part as well. So if we had five whole cookies, but then a smidgy of another, we would have five and one third of the next one. Not enough to make it a complete cookie, but just a fractional piece. We call these mixed because they're mixed up of holes and parts. We can add and subtract mixed numbers together by first converting a mix to an improper fraction. So if we take this mixed and we want to make it an improper fraction, you do that by multiplying the whole number and the denominator together. So I would do 3 times 5. That gives me 15. Imagine you're taking the five whole cookies, sketch them out here, and we're splitting them into three pieces. So there's three pieces here, there's three pieces here, three here, three here, and three here. But the faster way of doing that is to just multiply five times three. We get five groups of three slices, that makes 15 total. But then we got this extra one slice from the fraction that we have. So we have to add in that extra one slice. So if we get 15 slices with this, plus a bonus slice from here, we really end up with 16 thirds. Notice that the denominator stays the same. We're not changing the size of the slice. We're just um, counting them in a different way. So we would call 16 thirds the improper version of that fraction. So you can convert your mixed number to improper fractions first, and then we can add or subtract, if it's a subtraction skill, the numerator parts together. So the numerator values are the numbers that are on top of a fraction, and remember that the denominators are the values on the bottom. The number on top tells you how many parts you have. The denominator tells you how many slices it takes to create a whole amount. The same denominator gets used, and then you can change your um, improper answer back to a mixed number and simplify that fraction if possible. So to go from an improper back to a mixed, it would be like taking this 23 over six, and now we're dividing how many sixes go into 23. If we had 23 slices and it took six slices to fill a box of pizza, we could take six slices and fill a box, that's one whole. Six more slices and fill a box, that's another whole. And we do that until we can't fill any more boxes. When we divide, that's really what we're doing here. So we would get three whole boxes filled that's where your whole number comes in. And then your remainder becomes your numerator. Notice that the denominator stays the same. So 23 sixths is the same thing as three and five sixths. Just like if I said, it's 14 days. That's really the same thing as two weeks. So we're talking about the same amount, just in a different way. So I'm gonna walk you through a couple here and let's see how it's done. So in this example, if at any point you um, need to kind of pause the video, if you're watching at home, you're welcome to pause. Looks like my battery is running low. I better talk faster. So we take this mixed and we turn it into an improper. And we take this mixed and we turn it into an improper. And then we add our numerators together that's why where the 13 plus 21 came in. The same denominator gets used. So we were working with fifths. We're still working with fifths. And we come up with 34 fifths, which becomes six and four fifths if we took the numerator 34 and divided it by the denominator of five. We would find that it goes in there six whole times and then we would end up with four extras. And that's where the six and four fifths mixed number comes in. 
So that's one way. If this had been a subtraction, we would have just subtracted. We'll find that in math class, there's more than one way to solving a problem. And these are just called strategies or tools. And so just like in a, um, a toolbox, you might have three different screwdrivers. They all do the same thing, but you might have a favorite one that you're going to use. And so it doesn't matter to me which one you use as long as it gets the job done. So I'm going to go through another way to solve this in case going from a mixed to an improper is not your thing. Another option is to look at the values. Put your parts together with your parts and your holes together with your holes. And it might help to see it in a different way. So I can take three fifths and add it with one fifth and come up with four fifths. And I can take two holes and add it with four holes and come up with six holes. So I get the same answer six and four fifths, I just did it a different way. The problem with this structure is that sometimes when you add, you end up with um, an improper fraction piece that you kind of have to do a little bit of adjusting or regrouping. Or if it's a subtraction question, maybe the value as your numerator on top is not enough. So if we turn this, make this 12, and we're going to subtract. Let's make this 1 and this 4. So 12 and 1 fifth take away 4 and 4 fifths. We can't take 4 fifths from 1 fifth. We don't have enough, but we could borrow from the whole. So you take one whole pizza, which means now you have 12. Um, you don't have 12 anymore. You have 11 because you've cut one. And you take those five slices and you combine it with the one you already had and make six whole slices. So this is just another strategy. If um, subtraction with borrowing is a skill that you've used with whole numbers, it might also be something that benefits you when we're working with fractions and mixed numbers as well. So now we can subtract six fifths, take away four fifths. But notice that we had to do a little bit of borrowing ahead of time. So this is just another strategy or an option for you. Once again, doesn't matter to me which one you pick, as long as you're able to find one that is successful for you. For the your turn questions here, I would like you to pick one of each kind. So the top half is all addition with mixed numbers, and the bottom three problems are all subtraction with mixed numbers. So I would like you to choose one from the top with addition, and one from the bottom with subtraction. If you're working from home, you're gonna pause this video while you work out one from each section. And if we're working in class together, we're all gonna pause this video and we're, sorry, I was getting a phone call from Goodrich actually. Um, we're gonna pause this video together and then we're going to go over the answers as well. So pause the video. So now that you've had a chance to try um, an addition with mixed numbers and a subtraction with mixed numbers, we're going to roll down to the answers and see how you did. If you're working at home, you can pause the video so you can check your work here. Notice that uh, there are lots of um, options given for some of these. So the word or means it doesn't matter if it looks like the improper or the mixed. It doesn't look like it. Um, it doesn't matter if it's that improper, this mixed, or this simplified mixed. They all have the same value. Um, and so it doesn't matter how you've given your answer. Were you successful in adding those mixed numbers together? And were you successful in subtracting those mixed numbers together? So pause the video while you do a little self evaluation. How did you do on those skills? If you find that you need more practice with these skills, no worries, that's what I'm here for. But you might have to be willing to put in a little bit of overtime. 
I also have um, lots of video examples and things in our Google Classroom, extra practice, um, game links even, that you can use um, to keep practicing because practice makes us better. Not perfect, just better. So for a grade, you're going to be working in your journal workbook, pages one and two, the even problems only. So even problems are numbers two, four, six, eight, and on and on and on. On page one, our skill is going to be, is it prime or is the number composite? So the prime numbers, um, write out the word prime if the answer is prime. If the number given has more than two factors, one and the number itself, then it's a composite value. Please write out the word composite. Don't just use a P and a C, that's a shortcut. And then on page two, you are going to be um, practicing the skill of adding and subtracting the mixed numbers. So show all of your work, I give you paper so that you can write it out, um, you know, get it all on there. If you're working from home and you're like, oh boy, I forgot my journal, my workbook, it's in my locker and it doesn't do you any good in there. You can find um, the skill. So like if we look on here, whoops, the journal pages are listed um, in the, the day. So if there's a, a resource that you're still needing, but you're at home, you do have access to all of those materials. And if you can't print it, no worries, just write it out on lined paper and copy those problems down. And then you can work and stay caught up and then just take a picture of it and send it to me by email. If you do get extra time, you can go to the extra practice, prime and composite, there's a quizzes and the code is here. You can also work on the odd problems that are in the journal. The only thing that will be graded though would be the even problems. But if you're finding that you'd like to practice a little bit more, there is some extra practice available for you. And on our class calendar, there is also a, um, I have to find it here. Nope, that's not it. Oh, it's in our Google Classroom. Sorry, I forgot. Go to our Google Classroom. This is where all that extra stuff is listed. And we're looking underneath our chapter one. Chapter one opener would be here. There's a video here on prime and composite numbers. You do need a little bit more um, kind of a walkthrough or listening to somebody else explain it. You can watch the video. Otherwise, there is a little chart on here that highlights the prime numbers for you and reviews what a prime number is and highlights the composite numbers for you and reviews what a composite number is. So if you're ever um, at home and you're trying to work on your homework and you're struggling to remember, like, what did we do in class? I forgot. Um, find anything in our Google Classroom. All of the electronic resources are there, handouts, extras, and that should help you to be successful. So um, get started working on your journal, pages one and two. Remember, it's just the even problems that will be graded but feel free to do um, the rest of them as well for extra practice.